Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email us tmosso at the 1916company.com for purchase, pricing, and availability questions concerning this watch. And you should reach out about this watch because it is a modern wonder. Launched in 2013, the Gerard Perigot Constant Escapement LM immediately won the GPHG Equidor, effectively best picture at the Oscars of watchmaking. But that watch was 48 millimeters in diameter. So three years later, Gerard Perigot built what it believed to be the smallest possible execution of the watch at the time in 46 millimeters, and that's what we have here. 46 millimeters in diameter in grade five titanium. The watch measures 15 millimeters thick and from lug tip to lug tip, 53.5 millimeters with a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. On my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, the watch is large, but purposefully so. It is a vitrine for the mechanical work of art that sits within. Now I'm gonna zoom out as much as I can here so you can see this thing. I would wear this because of what it is and the purposeful use of the space inside the case, I could recommend this for a wrist my size, 16 centimeters in circumference. This is the limit. You can't go any smaller. However, 16 centimeters circumference and up, you will find this fits. Part of the reason is because it's very light, being made almost entirely of titanium and sapphire. So taking a quick look at the strap, it's upscale and it better be for a watch like this. Large rectangular scale, symmetrical scale alligator leather, large rectangular, symmetrical. You know that's an expensive cut of the animal. The lugs are drilled close to the case to help with fit. And as a result, a curved spring bar is required to make sure there's no impediment to the motion of the strap. So that's highly appreciated. There is some ball string to give it a little bit of volume so it doesn't look too skinny and shriveled against this massive sized case. And then you can see it's semi-gloss finish in black with a monotone stitch and a broad folded edge. Calfskin on the bottom, brand new Girard Perigo factory strap, no crimping, no gouging. We've got a deployant clasp here. You can see this watch probably wasn't loved enough by its original owner, as we still have some of the original packing stickers on that clasp. Take a look internally. You can see that we have spring-loaded pin snaps to ensure a snappy closure, and then a twin trigger system, so you have to press both of them to release this buckle. It will not fly open if you press one or no triggers. So a little bit of peace of mind for this watch, which is so valuable, both in terms of monetary considerations and also the preciousness of it as a feat of fine micromechanical engineering. One quirk about this watch, it winds backwards, so when you're winding it, and it is manual wind, wind it counterclockwise. A lot of folks aren't ready for that, and they ask me, why isn't my watch working? And it's because those giant twin barrels, which feature an extraordinary Grand Sonnerie style double ratchet click wheel. You see the click and the ratchet wheel right there with the double and the overlapping swan's neck springs. You'll see stuff like that on Grand Sonnerie watches traditionally, as well as the JLC Duomet, one of many fine flourishes on this watch. The case is simple and fairly traditional, as we have this round case with a little bit of tumble home to it. You can see the break between the lug and the case is super sharp, given the lug's very striking presence. We have a combination of polish and satination. And then we have a bezel with a little bit of an overlapping plane and a conical profile up top, leading to a dial that is defined by the time and the barrels at the top, and then this extraordinary monoblock constant force system at the bottom. First, let's talk a little bit about the finish. Now, you can see that we've got a media blasted finish below the bridges. We have a media blasted finish on the blackened upper portion. We have a sunburst on the dial. We have polished screws. We have mirrored hand-finished bevels on these bridges, which are designed to echo the famed tourbillon with three golden bridges. And then we have polished screws. Now take a good look at this roughly football-shaped monoblock of silicon. 
in the late 90s, Rolex tried to develop something called Project ELF under a inventor named Nicolas Dehon. Now, he, he was not able to make it work because at the time Rolex was operating solely with the intent of doing this in metal. So the idea of a constant force buckling blade in metal was able to run for short periods as a prototype, but not productively as a production intent product. And so the patents were never completed. As a result, Dehon left, went to Gerard Perigo, which was open to working with silicon, and he completed the idea there. Now, this little buckling blade in the center is the heart of the mechanism. The barrels drive these cam wheels. The cam wheels flick the buckling blade. So like taking a credit card in your hand and squeezing it and popping it from side to side past a certain point of pressure, it takes over and it buckles and it pops. And it's that popping buckling action that actually impulses this little lever at center. You can see how the lever is attached to the buckling blade and that it in turn impulses the balance, which you could see on the reverse side bouncing back and forth. Now, normally, if you have 145 hours of power reserve in barrels that big, you're going to cause all sorts of knocking and overbanking of the balance. You're basically going to destroy it. You're also going to cause a huge surge of amplitude when it's fully wound. So this acts essentially as an intermediate spring between the barrels and the escapement, like a remontoir on an FP Journe watch. And so for those six days of power reserve, we have constant force to the escapement and constant amplitude, which allows this balance to be adjusted with incredible precision. Now, it beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour. It has a power reserve indicator. You can see caliber 9100 is enormous, filling every millimeter of this case. It literally could not be any smaller. Pivots on 28 joules. You can see the finishing is exquisite with mirrored bevels, media blasted surfaces, solarization of the ratchet wheels on the side, black polished screw heads, a high degree of beveling, as well as beveling within all of the jewel and the screw sinks, and then a wonderful snailing, where I guess we could call this more of a solarization on the actual barrel ratchet wheels, which sit on top of the canisters themselves, and that lovely vintage inspired ratchet wheel and click. Truly special stuff and a watch that was a landmark when released. 30 meters water resistance. So while it's a sporty dress watch, it is still a dress watch. You don't want to try to take the swimming. You can see that there's a flange inboard or a rejo that's satin finished metal, as is the center second sand, allowing you to read individual seconds. And then Surprisingly, the watch does have a small amount of luminescence, both on the dial and the power reserve indicator. This was a landmark piece, and as a Neo variant, it is still in the catalog at GP today as an iconic piece. If you love this one, reach out to Team Also at the1916company.com for purchase and pricing details.